Hey there, I'm Debbie Hodge from stitchstories.com here today to talk to you about the design that went into Mistletoe Farm, one of the new Christmas designs in our shop this year. And I want to specifically talk to you about some design principles that are based in the science of perception and how I use them to create this design. So, Mistletoe Farm is supposed to look like a sign at a Christmas tree farm. We've got the border around the edge, sort of like a a metal riveted kind of edge to it and then pictures of the uh, the trees and a truck and some words the name of the farm mistletoe farm Christmas trees you pick them for pine spruce so in design it's really important to have some element of tension just like when you're watching a movie you want there to be a good guy and a bad guy right you want something to be at stake in dance there's hard movements and soft movements in architecture you've got straight columns supporting curves you want that contrast that tension those differences they make the piece more engaging they pull people in they just make it a, a, a design that's appealing to look at. So let's talk about a few of those things that I use in mistletoe farm. So one of the principles is that you want to break space. You want to break borders, right? So we've got the whole circular design. There's the border of a circle around, but then if you look, there's things that break out, like that tree breaks out up here at the top and the bottom. The sign breaks out a little bit. The title breaks out of the edge. We don't want everything just all tidy and lined up and contained. We want to do a little bit of the unexpected. Another place that you can sort of break lines is to break the lines of an image. So the Christmas tree here is oversized and in fact, it's not all shown. When you do that, when you crop an image and if you take a look at magazines, editorial layouts, you'll see sometimes photos are cropped. The principle of closure it's a, a psychological principle, a, a, a principle that has to do with perception. The mind is going to fill in the rest of the shape, so the mind knows that the tree extends. And what this can do with graphic design is it can make the sense that your piece extends off the canvas. And it's there's more there than you've shown, but the eye fills it in. And the result is just engagement, right? A little bit of tension, uh, added interest, engagement in the piece. One more thing that I'll talk about. There's so many things I could talk about, but I, I want to keep this focused on just a few things that give tension is purposeful um, snuggling and separating. Purposeful variations in how dense items are. So now I want you to think about if we did an overhead view of a beach that was that had lots of people at the beach, you wouldn't see the people spread out all evenly. You'd see different clusters. You might see small clusters of people, one or two people. You might see larger groupings. Some of them might be packed tightly. Some of them might have space. There's this variation. And when you think about how you place the elements in a design, you can have purposeful variation in that that can create a rhythm and that can make the piece more appealing to look at, more interesting to look at, but also it signals what goes together. So if you take a look here, this cluster of trees up here is packed quite densely, right? They overlap, they go together, so they should be clustered. If it was tree with a space, tree with a space, tree with a space, it just wouldn't have that same sort of feeling of a small little forest or a small little grove there. The other things that are clustered are mistletoe farm Christmas trees. So they don't overlap, but the mistletoe farm Christmas trees is all together. It signals to read it all together, to take it all in in one piece. Um, the ornaments on the tree, they are less dense. They're spread out, but they're contained by the borders of the tree. And they follow some, some rules, right? We've got some repeating shapes. And um, we've got the, the gold, the teal, the little ornaments that are spread out. So just take a look. Can you see how there's these variations in how densely things are placed, how they overlap or don't overlap, and how that creates a rhythm that gives your piece real appeal. So those are some of the design principles I used. Let's talk about how much fun it is to stitch. There is so much fun stitching in here. The, the Christmas trees, the oversized large Christmas trees, has those light pink peppermint stripes in it, and then it's outlined. I think I outlined it with a split stitch. You can use whatever kind of stitches you want. 
um, it overlaps that large tree and we really get sort of a, a big T that anchors the whole piece, right? We've got the large tree and the large Christmas trees. Those are the, the biggest items, the boldest items in the piece that really anchor it. Christmas trees not only extends past the border of the frame here, it also layers over the tree. And then this, the truck is also oversized. And when I'm first developing, I was like, oh, maybe I'll fill it in. Well, I quickly came to understand if I made that really dense and really dark, all of a sudden it competes with the tree uh, and the, the title. So that the, the, tr the truck is done in a light blue. I did it mostly in split stitching because I love how split stitching is great for those tight angles. Um, this banner is kind of fun. Some satin stitches in little spots, some nice, fun, straight, easy letters, and then outlined with an outline stitch. The you pick em sign is outlined with the chain stitch, and then I use the back stitch for the scripty text up there. And um, the trees are fun, right? We got the diagonal satin stitches that vary along with the lazy daisies. Um, chain stitch around the halo of the tree up here, the bursts, <clears throat> the, uh, the colors here also. So as we think about those variations in how we place things, that adds weight to the piece, right? So these, this small cluster has a lot of visual weight, and then this has, has some visual weight to support it. And then the colors that you use are gonna take on weight. So red usually takes on more visual weight than some other colors. And here's the thing about visual weight. It's not like you can actually put things on a seesaw and see if you get balance. For visual balance, you you have to feel it. And uh, it's partly a flow. So one thing, if you're stitching this, you might uh, think about these gold bursts. When I first stitched them, I filled them all in. And I thought it looked pretty cool, but then I pulled back. But I have a lighter touch. You might like them filled in. I felt like it gave too much weight to them and I thought they competed with the other pieces. So this kit comes with eight skeins of floss. You get, you always get a tin and I think there's eight. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight skeins of floss. What do we got? There's three greens in there, the teal, the moss green, and the, um, the sort of light sort of celery green. Those greens, there's even some tension between the teal and the moss green because those aren't greens that you typically think um, immediately, oh, yes, those go smoothly together. There's some tension, a little bit of discord in that. Then we've got the red and the pink, some gold, uh, the light blue, which also has a little discord with the, the teal, which has some blues in it, but some tension in there, but it's fun and bright. You get the pattern on a piece of fabric that's 10 and a half inches square. These patterns are printed in color and it's permanent. Currently I use a company called Spoonflower to print them. So they're not gonna wash out. You will need to stitch over all the lines so that uh, they don't show, but I keep the lines pretty thin so it's pretty easy to stitch over them and they're color coded. You'll also get this um, stitching guide. that will show you the colors that I recommend using in detail show you which stitches I recommend, which colors I recommend. You've got a color key, more details about how to stitch it, how to create the stitches on the back. Uh, I didn't bring it up. You get, you get a bamboo hoop. Uh, one of these. Oh, let's, yeah. One of these bamboo hoops. They're natural. And, oh, you also get, you get a card with two needles on it. They're the John James needles in size five. And, whoops, it fell off. You also get a magnetic needle minder, little coffee cup. If you're not familiar with what a magnetic needle minder is, let me show you. Ooh, sorry. Uh, so here I've been working on Mistletoe Farm. I got it wrapped around my stand here. <laughs> ah, sorry. There we go. So here's Mistletoe Farm. I've been stitching it. And while I'm stitching, I can put my needle minder so I'll take that little coffee cup, put it on the top, and then the magnet that came with it that was holding it to that card, I'll put that on the bottom. So now that stays right on here, and when I'm working, uh, whenever I go to thread my needle, I can just, if I want to get more thread, I can just put my needle right on that coffee cup, and it's, because it's magnetic, it stays right there. So yeah, here's me working on Mistletoe Farm. Definitely a fun design. I've gotten part of the title done and some of the trees done. The bursts, it's a really fun design to stitch. So 
that's Mistletoe Farm. You can find it at stitchstories.com slash tree farm. And you can find all of our holiday designs. We have a, a bunch of them. Like here I'm working on Noel. There's several other holiday designs. You can find them all at stitchstories.com slash holiday. I also want to say Mistletoe Farm is part of a bundle. Uh, can I remember what it goes with? It's with... I can't remember, but if you go to stitchstories.com slash holiday, you'll see all the bundles that we have, and this is part of a bundle. So, happy stitching.